Hello, thanks for joining me for update two of the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Ukrainian forces continue to make marginal advances along the periphery west, north, and east of the held area within the Kursk region. Ukrainian special ops forces struck pontoon bridges along the same river in the Glushkovsky Rayon. This is west of the Kursk region. It's been speculated that Ukrainian forces used HIMARS and air launched small diameter glide bombs in the bridge strikes. Koronevo seems to be a difficult objective for Ukrainian forces once again as yet another mech attack was repelled in Koronevo. Also in Koronevo, the Russian 200th Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade of the 14th AC out of Leningrad successfully repelled an attack and held positions along the road east of Zuravli, that's in the vicinity of Koronevo. Back east, north of Sutsa, Ukrainian forces are encircling Russian forces in Martinovka, which is actually northeast of Sutsa. An interesting story is that a mill blogger claimed that a Russian VDV soldier, that's airborne, led some conscripts out of a dire situation. Uh, was that an encirclement event? It's probably likely that's the same encirclement event that I just described northeast of Sutsa. In the far east of the held area, Ukrainian forces have advanced into southern Ruskaya Konopelka, that's east of Sutsa. An interesting uh, formation development is that now Russia has deployed the 810th Naval Inf Infantry Brigade out of the Black Sea Fleet to defend the Kursk and lead conscripts in the defense of the Kursk Oblast. So I'll try to provide formation sizes and different units pulled from the Donbass or deployed from non-traditional assignments. Now let's leave Kursk and see what's happening back east, what Ukraine is doing back down south and east um, near Donbass. Ukrainian naval forces and other Ukrainian units conducted a coordinated strike with unspecified weapons and hit a Russian S-300 air defense systems position near Novoshaktinsk on 22 August. The Ukrainian general staff is still clarifying the results of the strike, but reported explosions near the S-300 site. So let's take a look. Um, and then later in the report, um, it states that a prominent Kremlin-affiliated mill blogger claimed that Russian forces destroyed a Ukrainian ATACMS missile over Novoshaktinsk, alleging that this is the first ATACM strike against Russian territory. So let's take a look. If it was an ATACMS and they launched it, it said naval forces, uh, Ukrainian naval forces and other Ukrainian units. They could have launched them, so ATACMs can be launched. I've seen them um, aboard DDG-like vessels or frigates. So if that was the case, we can just measure that out. They have a, the, I think the Block 1s have a 100-mile range, which would be 300 kilometers. That's 103 kilometers, so it's definitely doable. So the range of the ATACMs varies depending on the specific variant. The earlier MGM 140A Block 1 has a range of approximately 160 kilometers, it's 100 miles, while the later MGM 164 Alphas of the Block 2s have an extended range of up to 300 kilometers or 186 miles. The Army ATACMs, that's the Army Tactical Missile System, can be launched from two primary mobile platforms, including the M270 tracked MLRS the multiple launch rocket system and the M142 HIMARS. So like I said, I have seen both the MLRS and the M142 um, on ships, on DDGs. The takeaway here is that Ukrainian forces are still reaching the Rostov Oblast in Russia back east and quite possibly with the use of US provided ATACMs. It's a good TTP that they're leveraging conventional assets in non-conventional ways and also in the Sea of Azov. That's a hotbed of maritime activity over there. In recap, Ukrainian forces have made marginal advances south of Koronevo. Koronevo itself remains a challenge for Ukrainian forces, though. They still haven't secured or seized uh, Koronevo. The area that they have progressed in down south of Koronevo and west is called Komorovka. Also, out east, Ukrainian forces are continuing in their effort to expand eastward past Sutsa and just northeast of Sutsa in the vicinity of Martinovka. The eastern area that Ukrainian forces have advanced is called Roskaya Konopelka. I also believe that I failed to mention the north. The town of Semenovka has also been seized on the northern periphery of the held zone within Kursk. For each update, I'd like to touch on a bit of analysis in an effort to maintain a strategic perspective of what is unfolding before us during this conflict. It looks like the lessons learned are not being reviewed as heavily as I thought they would be, especially given the ever-changing dynamic of these asymmetric battles and the unconventional nature of the warfare in Ukraine. 
of course, like anymore, what is conventional warfare? I don't even know. U.S. doctrine is not keeping pace. So the think tanks really are our best source for staying abreast of the changing landscape. There are quite a few, but my go-to has always been the ISW, or the Institute for the Study of War. Dr. Frederick Kagan and Kimberly Kagan, the founders of ISW, published a paper recently titled, Ukraine and the Problem of Restoring Contemporary War. In this paper, they laid down an argument contending that the lessons learned in Ukraine will be the path to successful military adaptation. They're saying that this conflict should not be viewed as just another passive opportunity to refine and update TTPs at the tactical levels of employment, but rather as a precursor to how we fight the next major war at all levels. In the paper, they draw a fascinating uh, comparison between the war in Ukraine and the Spanish Civil War that preceded World War II. The Spanish Civil War, war was fought from 1936 to 1939 and was a proxy war as well. The Spanish Republican forces were supported by the Soviet Union and the national forces were supported and propped up by Nazi Germany. Modern weapons in 1936 were the tank and the aircraft. They were both used in the Spanish Civil War, making the Spanish Civil War the perfect test bed for these new technologies. The lessons learned there from this war were then applied to global warfare in World War II, which started in 1939, of course. The conflict in Ukraine is also seeing the employment of new and emerging technologies such as drones for ISR, drones for targeting, drones for loitering munitions, drones for correcting precision fires, and much more. All of this has already provided a technological ecosystem for what Dr. Kagan refers to as the Tactical Reconnaissance Strike Complex. That's a mouthful or the TRSC. This paper is a highly suggested read and is available on the ISW website. I'll go ahead and close with that and I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.